Welcome, this is the Porn Sacrifice channel and part 40 odd something. So lockdown rules apply in terms of this has been filmed over a few weeks and I can't remember exactly what's coming out where, so it'll be 40 something anyway. Um, link for anyone that's new to the channel and wants to get caught up on this, the uh, engine swap of the 1.8 20 valve um, turbo, which is going into the 924S. Um, so this week is all about the crankcase breather and the routing of the hosing around the engine on which the camera is currently sat. So basically down that side, across the back through the hard pipe and then into the catch can. Um, so a bit of cutting and welding and a few other bits and pieces along the way. In old money, if you've currently got one of the cars that this engine sits in, this is essentially the uh, PCV delete. Um, so I'm removing um the pcv valve sending the the basically the hoses round to the catch can um and then removing the hockey puck as well so um i'll be going through all of that the nice thing is is that the engine is pretty much bare in the middle of the engine bay so you should be able to see everything fairly clearly um and i'll just talk through uh what i'm doing as i go so uh, I think, if I remember rightly, uh, the first part of this is going to be the metal hose which runs around the back of the engine and just a couple of things that I need to do for that. Obviously there's a few things that VW, Audi owners uh, can skip in this. Um, there's some fabrication that's going on that's very specific to this build. Um, but yeah, let's get on with the, um, the metal piping. Right, we have got this cheeky little air pipe which winds its way around the engine and is smacking into the top of the turbo. Also, um, the other thing with it is it's actually too big to fit uh, the hose on. Um, however, what I did find in my section of off cuts and scraps, this is why I keep stuff, is this bit from I think the water pipe that I've just reordered, um, that fits thusly. So if I can chop this, chop this, weld the two together, um, I'm going to have a bit of a solution on this end. And I've got something else on order, so I'm just gonna see what the shenanigans are and what's happening around the other side, but that's not going to stop us getting busy with this bit in the meantime. Okay, so what is interesting is that is just what's come out of here. So this is how much oil there is. And I know there's a lot of always with these things, a lot of internet debate about what's where and how much oil is actually in this stuff. The answer is a reasonable amount. And uh, this is why we have catch cans. Cut and cut. Um, so yeah, basically that bit's just come off of there. This bit has just been liberated from the other little bit and all nice. Um, that's all new and clean, so I don't need to worry about that. This one, um, so I've just quickly gone around the edges um, to give it a slight tidy up. But what I think I'll do, um, with the bit that has been used. Now, bearing in mind that this has just been the air sort of recirculation from the vent, uh, from the engine venting, there was actually a reasonable amount of um, uh, oil in there. So I just want to give this a bit of a clean out. Just, it, it doesn't matter as much with MIG um, as it does with TIG. I mean, MIG tends to go through a lot of things. Um... Now I don't normally bother trimming things, um, but I thought I'd just tidy that up a little bit. Um, as I went around it fairly fast when I was doing the welding and it's gonna be in a reasonably visibly visibly visible uh, place in the engine bay. So that all neatly on there. Set this on. It goes on there quite nicely. That'll obviously be clamped. And then I think 
I need to check, but I think that will neatly go down um, onto the um, catch can just there. I think if I keep this also a bit longer, it will force it basically just to sit up a little bit and stay out of the way of everything else and stop any snagging. So we're coming off the crankcase into the uh, PCV valve there and then we've just got the uh, hard pipe which comes around the other side of the engine which has actually already been modified. So that's what we've got. This is how it looks on the car. My original thought was just to, um, in fact actually I probably should have done this, um, although it's just getting, it, everything's getting a bit tight under there with the way that I'm modifying anything. Uh, the easy option would be to just connect that like that um, and that would probably make the most sense. The, I'm quite keen to get rid of this little plastic bit. Um, this has got re really brittle and broke uh, in the existing one and the whole thing cracked so I'm quite keen to uh, replace that. Um, so what I've done or what I've found and this was just purely coincidental. Essentially I've bought this thingamajig which is uh, an adapter which goes into the engine. You've got this billet section and then you've just got the o-rings that are, are supplied with it um, and then essentially that replaces that horrible bit. The slight difference with it though is um, it comes as with a uh, AN10 fitting um, which is great. So I had some of those knocking around, uh, although I did need to get another one. Um, so yeah, that obviously hooks together and then we just go on to the into the block and it just fits there. So that, as you can see here is the way that the um, fitting is pointing, it's gonna be very hard to get that to meet up with the cable and also um, it's an AN10 fitting as well. So what I've decided or what I was able to get is I had a spare fitting and some spare hose. So rather than just try and get the, the other end of the hose straight onto the, the cable, I've ordered a steel um, weld on fitting. So essentially that. And the idea with this is, is obviously just on that side that gets welded onto the pipe, um, which hopefully I can do without making a mess. Okay, so that was a twofer for, um, I guess, firsts. One was really, really difficult to get an arc off of this. Uh, I don't know why, normally I just clamp to the, the, the earth clamp to the bottom of the vise uh, and away we go. Um, but for some reason, this didn't seem to want to play this time. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then bizarrely, I was a little overconfident in my welding, which meant that um, I just thought I'd set up for the shot and then worry about everything else afterwards. But um, yeah, that's left a few gaps. So I've then had to go around and, and, and do it again and probably focus a bit more on the welding rather than cinematography, which probably didn't turn out that great anyway. So there we go. Um, right, next thing for this then is when the um, when this thing uh, cools off, because it's red hot at the moment, as I just found out. Um, uh, I'm going to get that back on here, get the pipe back on the car, um, get this bit in um, so that I can just get some sizing and then all I'm going to do is just get this cut and then get the braided line made up and if you haven't seen me making up uh, hoses before, um, basically hose cut to size, it's got the end that goes on and then the bit that goes in, I'll show you in a sec. Um, this is my makeshift um, hose clamp. You can buy a special box that these go in uh, for when you're putting everything together. So um, let's just get this undone. Just put the tape on there to stop everything from fraying and going nuts. Um, this should then, with that nice and square, is 
nicely in. Um, you might not be able to see that, but yeah, it's just butted up just against the lip there. So that's done. And now we just clamp this in place. You might be able to freestyle it and just hold this and, and do it. Um, and then we need to get this fitted in. So essentially th as this goes into the hose, obviously that pushes out against the side and then this screws in and just holds everything in place. Um, that's taped up. Um, and I've got this special um, expensive spanner which is designed to not mark the fitting because it's this is all quite soft, but it kind of does mark the fitting as well. The, the only other thing I'm going to do to kind of ease this along um, is just give this uh, get the cloth, put my rag, um, a bit of a spray with some uh, all-purpose cleaner just on the end there. Um, Obviously that's going to dry out, but it just helps to lubricate this as it's as it's going in. Um, the main thing to watch out for, so the, what I will do is, I've got to do this, is I like to put just a little bit of tape on the hose. Um, and the reason for putting that on there, and apologies if you have seen this before, uh, is just so that as this is going in, it's not pushing the the, the hose too far out. So um, we just need to get that in and get the thread to bite, which I think it already is. It should be brilliant. That's now made up. That probably was about 10, 15 minutes worth of work. Um, I am decided that I got mugged off by whomever made and sold me this spanner. It just, it's marked everything and made a bit of a mess of it. Not that that is a massive issue um, just from where this is, but it'd be nice if things did what they said on the tin. So this now is ready to go on the car. Hopefully it's all gonna fit um, and contort. I mean, it's just basically going to be kind of like that. But yeah, let's let's see what this looks like on. And then we're pretty much done then. Okay, so while I was up on my lunch break, I thought I'd have a quick look and just pop onto the Mishimoto website and see exactly what the direction of flow is. Um, I just wanted to double check before hooking the hoses up because I'd completely forgotten what happened before. And it's it's you kind of the information is there, but it's nothing as simple as oh here's the catch can put that in here and it comes out here. By the way, it goes in there and comes out there. Um, but yeah, that's basically the way that it works. So I'm having to. It was set up kind of in that way. I need it to now point that way to go back towards where the pipe is. Um, but just while I've got this out. Um, basically turning it around. There's just some little um, screws that go in the top there, or bolts that go in the top. Um, yeah, so essentially, it's just, I mean, it's quite clever. I mean, you, you've got the um, air coming in through there. This special thing is a disruptor. It's designed to send the air down. You can see there's the baffle plate in the bottom there, and then there's a drain underneath. Um, and then the air gets sucked up through here, um, basically by the pressure of the air going through and being drawn into the engine or into the turbo. Um, that's essentially um, where that all fits together. So I just need to screw this back in and then get that hooked back up uh, to the hoses. There's just one other thing worth mentioning is on the standard um, turbo intake, which seems remarkably small. Um, so obviously that's turbo side and intake side. So as the air goes through, essentially this, this what's called the hockey puck, but um, it's a pressure regulator. Um, that's where this, if I didn't have the catch can from the back from the pipes and from everything else, this is where the hose would be coming in. Um, I'm actually going to remove that and just essentially connect from the catch can straight back in. I'm gonna set this to one side in case I do need it, but 
um, it's designed to regulate pressure. And I think actually with the way that the catch cam works and, and everything else, I think it's going to do that. So um, yeah, I'm just going to screw the catch cam back together now we've had a little demonstration. Well, I know that. that was actually quite successful um, first time around. So yeah, pleased with the way that that's gone. Um, we've got everything routed around with the PCV delete. So that's one less thing that I need to worry about, um, particularly when I start adding more boost and what have you. Catch cans are, in there are all done. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that. I just need to now route that hose from the outlet into the um, turbo intake pipe when that's ready. Um, so yeah, relatively smooth, all done and dusted. There's a few other things that I've got underway at the moment and some bits are already filmed. So hopefully there will be more progress as we press on uh, very soon. So as always, thanks for watching and hopefully catch you next time. Cheers.